Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Game of Thrones when that's coming. In this video we are going to continue on into the All Out War uh, event. We are going to take a look at how the map functions and how the buildings func functions in this uh, video here. And we are also taking a look at vehicles to kind of get an idea about how they also function and how they fit into this entire event system. First of all, you can see here right now that I'm above a village. There are various villages uh, spread around the map. You can see that the main faction is down here and then around it you can see there's a bunch of dots and each dot is pretty much a village. And the village is crucial in the sense that you need to take it over. You can do it in, in various ways. I'm going to show you how in the next video uh, where we are going to focus on the war aspects of the game and how the troops and commanders and stuff like that work, works. In this part here we are of course looking at the map and you can see here right now the map is pretty darn huge there's a lot going on overall here and you have to kind of connect everything by dots and roads uh, you can see here for example uh, we have connected a bunch of dots here which are villages which have taken over next to buildings and you might think, okay, then you can just take over this building up here. But in fact, you can't because you need to have a certain amount of villages around it to actually be able to declare war on it. And the one that can declare war on it is going to be the leader or I believe the lieutenants can potentially too. And for that matter, you actually need to take over villages. And the same applies for enemies. If they want to take over your buildings, they will have to take uh, over the cities next to the buildings uh, first to actually get a... Uh, and the ability to actually declare war on them and for this matter it's, it's it's super easy to understand but I would say when you're starting out an event or so on start taking over some of the villages and try to connect the map in your favor to kind of be able to expand more that way so aside from villages there's of course also cities and cities have uh, special abilities or give you access to certain things or does something for you while each city also has a uh, next amount of buildings and stuff like that we're going to go to take a look at the buildings just in a moment but first of all we're going to take a look at how the different cities uh, help you on the map or what their abilities are of course the starting city long reach city gives you some buildings as well uh, gives you a starting point on the map and makes it so that you have also a starting resource which uh, we we'll take a look at uh, just in a moment then there's of course the military cities which work in a similar way as fortresses do in glorious battle uh, i believe it allows you to send out troops uh, from that specific military city if you want to but it of course costs uh, wheat to do so so uh, keep that in mind before sending out your troops and then there's of course the uh, uh, Potion City, uh, which increases hospital healing speed by 10%. Uh, really good in general. Uh, of course, I'm not sure if this also applies to commander healing, um, but it at least applies to the normal troops uh, in case you actually do burn through your 10 million troops that you get from all out war at the start. Then there is the Blessing City, which increases allied total attack, total health, and total defense by 50%, which is a decent chunk. Uh, nothing major but split out on let's say 200 accounts maybe then it of course is noticeable and then there are of course also indust industrial cities S indust industrial M and L like small medium and large and as you can see they don't have any special abilities but that's because similar to the long reach they have resource nodes and once you have your faction starting capital if you can say like that you can see down um, below that there are resource nodes where you can harvest sweet and these aren't the only resources that are available here in this map if you go to the small industrial city then you can do something similar you can go down and you can see that we have uh, for example a brass mine here where you can um, harvest brass obsidian mine and silver mine so these are of course the four new types of resources uh, in terms of feeding troops you still use your regular healing stuff like that so that's not something you have to worry about but for a bunch of things like for example with wheat you can heal troops with logistics 
uh, that are wounded and you can also replenish uh, resilience you need uh, brass silver and obsidian to create vehicles upgrade buildings and so on and so on but all of that is going to be shown in just a moment so don't worry about that we are now back in our faction capital and we're going to take a look uh, at the buildings that are inside the cities to give you an idea of how they work and what their purpose is. The municipal center is the town hall of the city, so to say. Uh, if the municipal center falls, then the city is taken over and you will lose it in that regard. And when you click on it, you can see that there's durability. Once that durability hits zero, then it's been taken over. It requires a certain amount of attacks uh, from March and so on to actually kill it. But it's not super difficult, uh, but it poses a challenge at least. You can of course also upgrade it. The upgrade has to be has to be done through the leader and potential lieutenants has to allow it before the upgrade will be showing. And the upgrade for the multi percent of course increases durability, uh, allowing it to take more hits and allowing you to defend for longer as, at least. And then up here we have the warehouse. The warehouse is where you can store your uh, resources in and I believe once you store resources in it then if it gets taken over the enemy faction will probably take over your resources as well. So for example if you have a march or a match against someone where you have a bunch of uh, resources stored in your warehouse and you know you will lose then it might potentially be an idea to move your resources from your warehouse to a different warehouse that's uh, behind safe lines rather than having it on front line. And you actually have to move things physically. You can see here a couple of armies, for example, that have wagons in. These carry uh, resources and then can carry the resources from this warehouse to a different warehouse from a different city. Uh, so keep that in mind as well. Then there's archery towers which will attack and target uh, any enemies that are nearby. Uh, not really anything big or anything like that. Uh, currently the range isn't that high, so you can avoid it if you cross outside of the range um, but that might also change for the public server they might increase the range so it targets further out then there's the city gate uh, each city has four city gates and uh, these city gates has to be broken down before you can actually enter a city so the way to uh, actually conquer a city is to break down a city gate go in and then take over the town hall in the middle here and then you take over the city that way and as defenders you have to make sure that they do not get inside the city and try to keep an outside of the city gates. There is a city gate on each side of the city and these are something that you have to try and keep uh, alive and I believe they will also attack uh, enemies once they get near. So keep that in mind as well. Then there's the barracks uh, which is the place once you deploy troops they will come out of this uh, starting faction barracks uh, unless you have a military city where you want them to spawn in. Uh, for the cost of some weed, but otherwise they will all your marches will start uh, in the barracks area in your faction capital Which is uh, also fairly simple to understand And lastly we have the armory which is the place where the queues for wagons or chariots to be made uh, are put in uh, you have to use your army to Produce them you can click there for example and you can see that there's a production button that shows up and if you click on it then you can see please select an allied army first and you click on an army that you have out and then send it down to help producing this specific chariot that's in the queue here and in the faction garage you can see a bunch of chariots that's uh, or vehicles that you can use and what they cost for example this one for a 10 man or 10 marches rally which gives also allied total attack plus 10 percent costs 600k brass for example then the tier 3 of it costs 3 million brass 2 million silver 1 million obsidian has a bunch of allied uh, increased uh, stats and then of course also skills which increases uh, movement speed for example and the same thing for resource wagons you need resource wagons to gather in this mode i will show you as well uh, just in a moment how it works and uh, small medic vehicles which will be for like explain a little bit about how it does work in the next video uh, but overall uh, you can send a once you have the enough resources you can begin an application for it and you can see request accepted and then the leader has to accept the request to see if it's worth doing then if it is then come into the production queue if the leader feels like it's not worth doing they, they dismiss the request and then 
uh, yeah, it won't really be in the queue or show up in the queue here right now. So before ending this video, I will show you how the buildings inside the city also work uh, in practice. And then since we want to also show how the warehouse works, I will as well show how gathering works um, the, at the same time. Basically, you can click down here, similar to the Siege of Interval. You have your commander spots, your dragon spots, vehicle spots, and your troops. And you have also the saving ability for uh, certain presets if you want to do that, uh, similar to Siege of Interval. In this case, we just want to take three commanders, uh, which is fairly simple. Then you can take a dragon if you want to. Uh, dragons will have similar stats as to Siege of Winterfell in that regard. Uh, you can take the amount of troops you have. Uh, I'll take just the uh, tier 4 bows in this case. And then of course you can apply a vehicle to it as well. And vehicles are important uh, when it comes to gathering. You can see here uh, this is a small resource raccoon. And you can see a durability which I assume will go down if it gets attacked by enemies. Uh, you can see the active attribute which increases sweet gathering speed by 5% and then you can see down in the bottom of it that the special future says that can gather reed and brass so you need specific wagons to harvest specific types of resources and we just showed you how you can um, create wagons uh, asking for it in the faction uh, building or the armory where you can go into the faction tab, uh, tab and ask for it but in this case we pick a vehicle because we want to use it for gathering and then we click it here, have it added and then click march and you can see here now the march is out uh, the march moves similarly to a siege of Winterfell super easy, nothing serious uh, all three armies down here have been equipped with a vehicles and if you click here on this army you can see that once you hover over a mine you can see a sickle once you click on it then the army will go over there and the army will start gathering. You can see down here on the gray, green button it will be start uh, that will be gathering. And you can click here on the button above there. You can see the amount of troops that you have inside. You can see the resilience the march has. And then of course how much room it has for resources and how much it has harvested. So in that regard it's super similar. This army here, once you click here, you can see here at it has already 50.4k weed. And to show you how the warehouse works, we go over towards the warehouse. And you can see here that there's a bunch of buttons uh, for this specific march. And this is for example for garrison, uh, return to city, which uses up the special zones. There's the enable alert, which will auto attack any enemies that comes nearby. The recover resilience, the self heal, and uh, initiate rally disband troops and stuff like that. If you want to disband your troops you have to be next to a barracks. I will show that in a moment. But in this case we want to adjust supplies and you can see here we have a 50.4 uh, 50k read roughly. And what people might think is okay well if we want to uh, put in read and storage then you have to click up the, the bar which is wrong. You actually have to do the opposite. Right now you can see uh, I will end up taking out 50 million uh, read and if I go down then it will be down to zero but you can see that there is a 302 uh, million read inside and you can also see that I won't be carrying any resources. So when I click there you can see once I drop down here and click up here that my resources have reset to zero. I am not carrying any resources and if I want to disband the troops then I move towards the barracks and once again you can see moves very similar to Siege of Winterfell so there's nothing really new in that and once I'm near enough the barracks you can see the range once you click on the barracks you take the troop and then you can either click here or you can click C on your keyboard and it will disband the troop and that's pretty much how that works so that was a glimpse on how the map was in Siege of or not Siege of Winterfell uh, All Out War and how the buildings and gathering works uh, I hope it was useful in the next episode we will take a look at the war aspects and some of the other things uh, in that regard. So take care guys. Bye bye.